Today, we're going to be talking about outsourcing your real estate business. What's up, guys? My name is Benjamin Day with Lineshare Bookkeeping Landlord CFO. And today, we're going to go off the beaten path a little bit and talk about something that bookkeepers are already inherently good at. We're wired for this, so we're going to give you this knowledge today. And that is processes and procedures. And before you turn this off, I really am going to jump in and help you give you kind of the foundational building blocks of how it is that you can actually get time freedom in a real estate business. It's not all about the financial freedom. That's super cool. Uh, and we like money a lot, but if you make all the money you need, but you can't ever get away from the office, you've just made yourself another job. And that's not the point. The point is to make enough money to buy your time back so that you can have money and time and, and rule the world and go sit on this magical, you know, uh, financial freedom, cash flowing beach that exists somewhere. Right. Uh, so you're not going to get there, <laughs> whatever it is that you're trying to do. You're not going to get there if we don't have solid processes and procedures so that you can hire a team and outsource and, you know, go on vacation. Uh, so we want to spend a little bit of time talking about this because this is where we see a lot of investors get really frustrated, right? Uh, especially investors that investing is their first business. And the, before this, they were just working a job and they don't have any background in this. How do you begin to scale, especially when you're like trying to, you know, hit a cash flow freedom number? Like, what does this look like? Uh, so today we're going to really back into how to outsource your tasks and uh, effectively get your time back. Number one on our list, and how is it that you can reach time freedom in a business is you really got to begin with the end in mind. You have to know upfront, what is it exactly that I want? And, and this can take multiple shapes. If what you really want is for all of your rehabs to go without a hitch, like without problems, or if there are problems, you don't have to manage them. Um, if that's what you want, then let's start there. Let's figure out like, this is the finished project. This is the finished product that I want. And what I want you to then do is break down that finished product into stages. Uh, and so with a rehab, it'd be easy to say like, you know, Hey, at the very end, we need to make sure that everything is clean and listed and sold. Right. Uh, and then at the very beginning, we want to make sure that everything gets cleaned out. If it needs to be cleaned out, change the locks. Uh, and then there's stuff in the middle, depending on what the rehab really looks like, what the rehab really needs. If you can begin to just break it down into those big steps, that's where you're going to see the most initial momentum. That's where it becomes easier for us to compartmentalize and really figure out the details if we know what the big steps are. Uh, so for instance, in my business, in my bookkeeping business, our end goal is to have fantastic financial statements for clients. And so we have a perfect bookkeeping system. It's seven steps. It's P E R F E C T. And it's awesome. Cause that's how my brain works. But after the end of the perfect bookkeeping system, financial statements should be as good as they were ever going to be and submitted to clients and every step along that process. Now I know, Hey, here's our flow. And if I start here and I do everything right, then we're good to go. But if I skip this step right here, I can't do the rest of this. And, and just those big pieces help me begin to really understand. It's like, okay, what needs to happen in this stage of the process so that everything else works. Uh, and so really like number one in our tip for outsourcing to get your time freedom back is to understand your end goal and the big pieces that play a part in that end goal. Number two then on our list is to take each individual big piece of that end goal and break it down into a checklist. Like if, if we have a perfect system and it's seven steps, we know that, hey, you will be done with this step when these four things are true. Uh, when we know that, you know, like the house is painted and it's listed and we've got offers and, uh, all of our vendors are looking to get their final paycheck, right? We know that this is like, we are done here when these four things have happened with our rehab, if we're using this example, right? Um, and, and, you know, your checklist may be different than mine. But generally speaking, beginning to build any process in your business, whether it's bookkeeping or rehab or whatever, once you have those bigger goals and break them down into checklists, it's now, it becomes immediately easy for you to hand that checklist to someone and say, Hey, listen, I need you to go and make sure that we sell this house. And here's the checklist that you need to make sure it gets accomplished so that we can sell this house. Now, suddenly that person, even if they know real estate in their own way, and they don't actually know how you operate, if they have the checklist, they can make sure that all those things get done. Uh, and if they go do it their own way and they're creative about it, 
that's kind of fine as long as it gets done and it gets done right. And so now suddenly just right here in the middle, you already have the ability to begin to outsource. And that's really a powerful place for your business. If you know the big picture process, you know the individual steps and those individual steps have a checklist that you can hand to somebody, it's gotta be a short checklist. But if, it, if you can hand that to somebody, it's over, right? You've now officially outsourced. The problem is that once you outsource just the checklist, but you don't actually have the details documented, that's where inconsistencies begin to come up. If I go tell somebody, if I tell somebody to go paint a house and then I walk through that house and every wall is a different color, I've got a problem, right? Unless I specifically asked for that, that's probably not going to go super well, depending on the market and the buyer and all of that stuff. So we really want to make sure then, and so this is really our tip number three is that every checklist that you develop should have a long form process behind it. Where when I say, hey, go paint that house, you know we'll be done with the step when the house is painted. What I mean is the interior and the exterior and the interior is this color and the exterior is that color and the trim is this color and make sure that, you know, you clean up when you're done, right? Like I don't want paint on the floor, like stuff like that. If you begin to really make sure that all of that is a long form process, hey, go to Sherwin Williams, pick out this color and can, uh, put it on this account, make sure that in when you're buying it, you say that it you put on the purchase order that hey, or the job name, this is for this house, uh, so that we can document that for our accounting later, then go and actually do the job. Like if you have this in long form, it does a couple things. And, and it's really powerful. Number one, it helps empower the A players on your team to know that they're doing the right thing. There are so many people in, in the workforce that want to do a good job. They genuinely want to deliver on what it is that they're being asked for. The problem is that they feel like you're a little bit vague. And it's, if you're a real estate investor, you're probably very big picture in what it is that you want to get done. Uh, there's probably things that you're very minute detail about, but you're a big picture person. That's just very common in real estate investors. And, and that's fine. But what that means is that you're probably not giving as much detail as you think you are or as you should. So by having that long form process that m matches a checklist at the end, what you're doing is saying, if I were going to be incredibly picky, this is exactly how I would want this to get done. And now that person knows exactly how you want it to get done and they can go and deliver on that. And then you can have a conversation with them later if it's like, hey, our process is really more of a reference. Here's kind of the wiggle room. Here's the freedom you have. You can have that conversation later. But if you give somebody just total control as long as they meet some checklist criteria, you're really opening yourself up for some problems and some inconsistencies, some things that you can't deliver on, things that you will have to fix. But what I don't want you to do is start with the long form and then try to make a checklist and then try to make big pieces so that you can see the end result. You're going to get so bored doing that. That is just an easy way for you to be really, really miserable. And so what we like about this system is that you can begin with the end in mind. And that's really kind of giving you the motivation that you need. From there, when you break it out into big pieces, it's easy for you to remember and then really drill down into the specifics. Like I creating 10 hours worth of training on how to code a receipt into QuickBooks sounds like an absolute snooze fest. But if I know that one of the big pieces of my you know, whole system, that my end goal is missing a procedure in the very beginning stages, and I know that I won't get to my end goal, I'm now much more motivated to go and make that happen. So what we like doing, again, is when you have the end in mind and you have the big pieces and you know what the checklists generally are, from there you can begin to pinpoint like, hey, I really need to write all of this down. I'm very picky about this. This piece is very important. This thing over here, eh, not so important. This checklist is pretty straightforward. Um, and this one is definitely straightforward. There's no need to really uh, outline what this particular checklist item means. But this checklist item right here means something very special to me. And I want to make sure that people get it done right. And now you're in business. Now you can go and do all the long form process, record the video, write the long form content that you need to make sure that that person is doing that piece of the job correctly. And before you know it, your end result will be in play and you'll have made a million dollars and everybody's super happy. So this is how we like to structure our processes. And this is how you can begin to outsource. And outsourcing is so weird. It's just it's just fundamentally important that you understand who you're putting into what stage of the process. Uh, it is super easy for me to go out and hire an employee at a competitive wage 
for a task that I have long form processes for. I can go to somebody and say, hey, this is exactly the job that I need to do. I think a six year old could do it. Uh, would you like to make some money doing this process for me? And they could say yes, because they don't have to have any experience or any creativity or any background knowledge. I've got it all written down long form and we're good to go, right? Or I could go find like a subcontractor and say, Hey, Mr. Subcontractor, I need my bathroom to be redone. I need my electrical to be redone. Um, I don't really care about the minutia of it as long as these certain checklist things are done. You can just go find a subcontractor and they'll make it happen, right? And, and that might be a little more expensive than hiring an employee, but at the end of the day, you don't have to nitpick their job to them, nor should you. That's a great way to really get under a contractor's skin. Um, and finally, it's like, where we don't want you to be is a situation where all you know is the end result, right? If all you know is the end result of your process is, hey, I want a pretty house that to sell and make me $100,000 in profit. If that's all that you know and you go and you hire somebody to deliver that to you, what you're hiring is a general contractor, a construction manager, and you now have no control over the process. There's no checklist. You just kind of have a vision and you're hoping somebody else is understanding what you had in mind. That's a really rocky place to be. You can eventually hire that, but I, what I would really encourage you to do, especially if you're starting out, is understand the individual pieces. This is the end goal. Here are all the pieces that we need in order to get there, break those down into checklists. From there, you could potentially do long form content on a rehab so you don't have to go hire a, like a plumber um, or, or like somebody to do your demo. Like the, that's where you could begin to do some things yourself if you had the long form checklist you really understood. But at least just getting to the checklist piece, you can begin to hire subs. You know when the job is done and done right and done well and done to your specifications without having to nitpick their job to them. This is what outsourcing is all about. And it really begins and ends with your processes, not just can you do the job? I'm not asking you to be able to do the job. I'm asking you to understand the job well enough that you know when somebody's actually done it correctly or not. Um, that's the easiest way to begin to avoid mistakes when you're outsourcing tasks. And, the, and it's fundamentally the easiest way to build your team. When you know that you're missing a piece from your end result, it's easy to go and find that specific piece as opposed to just hoping that anybody can begin to pick this up. Uh, so as you're considering building out your business, I really, really recommend thinking through every inch, not just the rehabs, not just the bookkeeping, not just the marketing, but everything. Look at what is your goal end result? What are the pieces inside of that? Break them down into checklists. And then if you need to, put them into long form content. Let me know in the comment section below what it is that you think we are missing from here. I've hired a bunch of bookkeepers, so I'm pretty familiar with the bookkeeping process and how to hire and vet those individuals, but there's a lot of things that I haven't hired for and haven't fired, hired consistently for. Let us know in the comments what you think about approaching your hiring, outsourcing, and getting your time freedom back with this method. Thank you so much, and we will see you in the next video.